So this section is about strain energy. We use strain energy mostly to find displacements, but we also use it in the next chapter for indeterminacy. But it all starts with strain energy. So let's go through a problem, figure out how we calculate the strain energy of this particular situation. So I have a simple beam with a load that is not necessarily in the middle. Now, what are we actually calculating here? We're calculating, if you look at this right here, you remember that when we bend something, you, it's not necessarily straining on the neutral axis. In fact, it wouldn't be straining on the neutral axis. But it would be shortening on one side and lengthening on the other side. And that stores up a certain amount of energy. That's what we're calculating. So this is an axial strain. All right, so the basic process of what we go through, we're going to look at the statics of our beam. We derive equations for the internal momentum for every component. Really, that means on either side of concentrated loads. And then we set up our integral and integrate. It's that simple. OK, so remember our general equation for strain energy is the integral of our moment equation squared over 2EI. In order to get our moment equation, we just need to do that statics first. So if I look at my beam, I'll redraw this. Remember, this is A. That's distance B, the whole distance. All right, so I'm going to do some of the moments on side A so I can calculate CY. So that's P times A. That's a negative moment. C times L. That's a positive moment. That equals 0. So CY equals PA divided by L. Then I could sum the moments on side C. And here I have positive PB, and I have a negative AYL equals 0. So AY equals PB over L. So this gives me what my forces are on both sides, which helps me when I'm trying to derive my moment equation. So I kind of like to make a table. I know that's not proper etiquette for BYU engineering, but I like to make two tables. It makes it easier to see. So don't do it this way on your homework because that's two column work in one column. So anyway, so I have M1 and M2 of X. Now why do I have to split it up? The reason is because um, in my mind, I'm drawing this shear moment diagram, and I notice it's not all one equation. It's a piecewise function. Just to show you what that would look like, let me, um, let me draw those real quick. So now that I know what the forces are on each side, if assuming that P is to the right of center, that means A is bigger, which means that CY is bigger than AY. So I'm going to go up a little bit, and go over, down, and over. So that's my shear. Right here you can see that these are two different values, therefore we have two different equations for shear. And it's going to be even more evident when we look at our moment diagram. So it starts at zero because it's a pin. It goes up to PAB over L and it goes back down to zero since it's pinned on that side as well. So you can tell that this and these two different moment lines have to be drawn with two different equations. So that's what I'm going to be deriving next. We do that by taking a cut on each side. And I'm going to define x as starting at a and going to b, and then starting at c and going to b. So I'm coming from each side. It just makes it a little bit easier. So I like to write that, A to B and C to B. So this is my cut at X from A. I have my shear at X, and I have my M1 of X. Now really, what this, is, this X can be anywhere from 0 to the total length of AB, is what we're saying there. So that can go from 0 to A. So I'll, I'll write that. So x is between 0 and a, and keep that in mind. I'll do the same thing for m2. This time we're starting at c, and x is the distance away from c. So I have my shear, 
This is my M2 of X. This is my Vx. So this is going to be going from 0 to a length of B at its maximum. What this is doing is I'm setting up my future limits of integration once we start integrating. So now I'm going to sum the moments at the cut here and at the cut here. For M1, that's going to be M1 of X plus a negative AYX equals 0. So M1 of X equals AYX. But AY, since we did our statics already, is PB over L. So that equals PBX over L. Same thing for our M2 equation. I'm going to sum the moments. That's a, actually a negative M2 of X plus CYX equals 0. And CY equals PA over L. So M2 of X equals CYX, which equals PAX over L. So now I have my M1 equation, my M2 equation. We can set up our integral now. So since we have two different M equations, I'm not going to stick both of them under one integral. I have to split it up into two different integrals since we have two different limits of integration. It's going to look something like this. So for M1, our limits, we said they were 0 to A. So I'm going to put that right here. Plus, our limits were 0 to B. Okay, now let's plug in our two different M's. Luckily, this is pretty simple of a term. It's just one term, so we don't have to do much on the way of foiling. From here, it's just basic integration. Okay, I could pull the constants out of the integration, and then all I'm going to have left is x squared on each side. So it's p squared, b squared, 2e, i, l squared, integral from 0 to a of x squared, which is a pretty easy integral in comparison to other ones you might have. And that's what I got before, so we're good to go. All right, so this represents our strategy for this beam for this particular situation. And we can use this to determine forces if it's indeterminate, or we can also use it to determine displacements, uh, which is what we're going to be doing next. And that's it.